Hey there, YouTube World Match Schwartz here, the Welding Geek. On this episode, I'm going to show you how I went about making the Mandalorian's bandolier and belt setup here. Came out pretty good, everything except for the holster. The holster will be on a different video. So if you want to see how I went about making this whole contraption, stay tuned to the video. All right, the first thing I've done here is cut my leather into strips. I've cut some one inch strips here and some longer. I think they're about two and a half inch strips here. The first thing I'm gonna do is locate um, where my little cylinders will go. Um, as you can see here on the back side of my leather, I ended up taking some masking tape and um, covering the back side so it, my sewing machine would feed it. Um, just a note if you're gonna do this, put the tape on, take it back off, put it back on a couple times so it becomes less sticky because I had a bear of a time trying to get this masking tape off, letting it sit on there for a while. It adheres to the leather really well. Now if you're noticing, I'm using this lighter barrel. Um, it's slightly smaller than my cylinders because I want a tight fit in my cylinder, so I'm just using this to stitch uh, my loops into place. Okay, now that I have my loops stitched into place, I'm gonna make the secondary piece, the secondary strap to go over top of my loops, and I'll be stitching that into place next. So the sewing machine I'm using is a Janome HD 3000. Um, and it does a really good job at sewing this leather. It comes with a leather foot and, and leather sewing needles if you buy the little package. But man, I'm really happy with how well this uh, sewed through the leather. Now I'm done with this little feature here. You can see how they, the cylinders fit in there nice and snug. Don't want to fall out. Um, so make sure if you're sewing in your loops, sew them a little smaller so it's a nice snug fit. So this next section here is just detail work. I'm not exactly sure what to call this, but I'm doing the bandolier if you haven't figured that out already. Um, this is a little uh, feature that's, I don't even know what to call it. I don't know what it does, but um, you'll see here in a minute what I'm doing.
And here's that little detail feature that I was working on. Like I said, I don't know what it's called, um, but I sewed it on there. And next up, I'm just gonna double up the rest of this piece. Also, as you can see, the masking tape on the back side really helps feed the leather through the sewing machine. The other side was really kind of hairy, and when I first tried to go sew it, it would not feed at all. And uh, just putting the masking tape on helped a lot. But like I said, put it on, take it back off, put it on a couple times so it's less sticky, so it's not adhering to the leather, otherwise it's a nightmare to get off. Alright, now that I have the main sewing part of the bandolier finished, I'm going to start on the belt. What I'm starting on here is there's a couple set of the cylinders, um, three sets actually, that I'm going to go ahead and sew into place here. Using my lighter barrel to make sure that they're a nice tight fit. And I'm just going to work around my belt and get each of the three sets put into place here. Now that I have my cylinder loops into place here, I need to put on my second layer of leather. I'm gonna window out this piece of leather and uh, with a, a razor blade, just marking them all out, and then I'm gonna stitch them into place.
right, I got my three sets of cylinder loops all sewn in the place. I'm looking good so far. So I found the limit of my sewing machine, which was uh, five layers. So I'm going to go ahead and actually hand stitch my bandolier onto my belt here. Just using, um, I've got the, one of the, the leather forks. Now you hammer it through and then just, uh, I think it's called saddle stitching. I'm just going to saddle stitch an inch or so on this, this piece here. Alright, now I have my bandolier attached to my belt. Alright, now it's time to jump into the shop and make some of my metal parts. What I'm making right now is my buckle and the little uh, thermal detonator backer plate. I'm just using my normal um, process of gluing my templates down. I'm getting them sheared out, getting the holes punched out, um, and then bandsawing, filing, and doing whatever I need to do to relieve my part out of my metal. Alright, I'm going to finish up my uh, filing and deburring here. I'm using a what's called a deburring knife or deburring tool. It's just uh, a blunted knife that takes a burr off of metal. Um, I noticed that in uh, the pictures from D23 that there's actually a cobra buckle that they use that just has a plate on the top. So I drilled out the pins of the cobra buckle and I'm going to use pop rivets as the pivot pins for all the other parts. After I went and got my buckle all filed out, all done, all pretty, I noticed that I made it wrong. So this one's garbage. And this is what I needed right here. One slot, a couple holes, and this should work pretty well. So what I'm gonna do now is put the this buckle back together. Um, like I said, using my pop rivets as my pins, and this thing should work really awesome.
All right, it was kind of a pain in the butt to try to get it back together with the springs and all the latches, but this is what it looks like now. I got my hammer of it squeezed down, and now I have a working buckle that I can take on and off. And this is what they used in the show from what I can tell. All right, next up here, I'm gonna make the little latch um, for the rifle sling on the bandolier. I have actually a piece of steel here and my plan is, is if I ever make the rifle with the strap, I'm going to put a magnet on the raffle strap so that will stick to the steel. And then the secondary part is aluminum. So I'm going to go ahead and get these um, relieved out of the metal. And then I'll show you how I go about putting it onto my strap. All right, so how I'm gonna attach this is I'm gonna use a thing called a countersunk hammer rivet. And this the tool here on my drill is set to that degree of countersink. So I'm just gonna countersink these and then I'll use a hammer rivet to attach it um, to my bandolier strap. Alright, so I'm going to use my reference here and try to locate this strap point. I'm going to use my drill to drill through the leather. And then I'm going to use washers on the back side to back it to make sure that the, the hammer rivets don't pull through the leather. And in the bottom section, I'm just using an Allen head bolt that's been sandblasted uh, with a washer and a nut on the back side here to attach the last point. All right, what I got up next is attaching the actual buckle to the belt. I just have a strap of leather here, inch and a half. I'm going to loop it through the, the, the buckle here, and then I'm going to use two uh, leather rivets, um, copper le leather rivets, um, to attach the buckle here. And how these work is you just put a hole through the leather um, and poke the copper rivet through, and then there's a backer washer that you hammer into place, and then you clip it. Uh, the excess off and then there's another section of the, the tool you use that just domes it over so it just sticks into place. And then when I'm done with that, I'm going to go ahead and sew on another piece of inch and a half leather. This will be my loop part of the buckle. All right, next up here, I'm gonna be making the pouch that goes on the bandolier.
I'm going to go ahead and attach this pouch with the same type of rivet that I attached the buckle with. I'm just going to hide it um, behind the leather strapping here. Alright, so I got my piece of aluminum here that I bent up for the thermal detonator um, pouch, I guess you would call it. I'm going to weld on some of these studs on the back side so I can easily attach it to my belt. This plate is wrapped in leather somehow, so I'm going to go ahead and attempt to try to make it look similar to what it does look like in the show. basically just cut it to length that would wrap all the way around the plate and then I'm stitching the bottom here and then I'm going to glue the back side so it kind of poofs out towards the front with the E6000 glue. Now that my glue is all set up on my pouch here, I'm just going to locate this pouch and press firmly so the studs dig into the leather and then I'll punch those two holes in it.
All right, final step. I'm gonna make the straps look dirty. I'm using black acrylic paint to do this. I'm just gonna water it down and then brush it on and let it dry, making it look greasy, making it look like it's got dirt and grime and stuff in all the cracks and to take away the new bright white uh, look of the stitching. And all right, that's the belt bandolier video. I hope it made sense. That was a build. Um, I had to redo some stuff. I go here and there. Hopefully I got that thing edited together well enough um, that it was understandable. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. I've got a couple more videos left in this build. Um, if you wanna see me continue this on, subscribe. I got, I'll have more content coming here in the future. I'll jump away from the Mandalorian for a little bit not quite sure where I'm gonna go yet I may maybe do the armorer's helmet or do some weld teaching or I'm not sure yet I haven't got that far in my brain <laughs> but anyway we're gonna do something a little different than this kit um, so if you want to see me go about doing that stuff if you want to see the other videos that are coming down uh, I think I got the pants left the whistling birds gauntlet left and the holster left so I've got a couple left on this build but um, if you guys want to see me go through that, subscribe. Anyway, my name is Matt Schwartz. I'm the Weld Geek. Thanks for watching my videos, guys.